Well, today on Nation, a window cleaning podcast, we're talking all about how to get into Waterfed. The most questions I ever get is all about Waterfed. We normally don't talk about gear, but this episode, we're going over everything you need to know Waterfed, so stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What's up? If it's your first time here, have a look around. Hopefully you enjoy everything, or at least you can tolerate it. Six years of content. You got every episode you could possibly think of, every question answered. Go back and binge. I know a ton of you are binging on everything, and uh, some of you have even listened to every single episode, which is nuts, by the way. Uh, today, if you're on YouTube, by the way, comments of how many episodes you've watched. Just that's your comment. It'll confuse everybody who didn't actually watch uh, and put that on there. Uh, but if you didn't know, my name is Jersey and I work with windowcleaner.com and I am a sales rep. So shameless plug of the day, if you need anything, that's what I do. Give me a call, shoot me a text, 862-312-2026. Yes, it's a shameless plug, but that's how I make cheddar. So if you wanna do like a virtual high five, that's how you do it. And, and if you want to be like the cool kids, which you already are, but if you want to be an official cool kid, let me know. I'll make sure to get you one of the limited edition cool kid stickers that only go out to people who put orders in through me. And that's again, just a little thank you to you. So 862-312-2026 is my cell. Save it. I'm the only Jersey, you know, I'm more than likely guaranteeing. Also, do me a huge favor and go to awcmag.com. Get yourself a subscription if you haven't already. I want every window cleaner to have a subscription to the American Window Cleaner magazine. Uh, it is absolutely awesome. It is a real magazine that comes to your door every single month, every month. And there is a custom sticker sheet in there all dedicated to window cleaning. So put it on your buckets and everything else. Live the culture uh, just be a nerd like the rest of us. And uh, more importantly, it helps me out. So go to awcmag.com, get yourself a subscription, and there you go. So there's all the, 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 the intro. Always takes about this long. So I apologize either way for intros, but we're talking about Waterfed. Now, before you jump off and say, I know Waterfed, I've been at Waterfed for years. Yeah, this there may be some things in here that you didn't really know or things that you may be questioning, or something along those lines. So it could be a good episode for you, either way. Um, but if you're new into water-fed window cleaning, or you have a window cleaning company, or what the new trend is, is people getting into window cleaning, and they're like, hey, this is expensive, more expensive than a squeegee at least, and uh, but it's easier, faster, I can get into it, I don't have to learn something right out of the gate. If this is for you, and you're just wondering, you got questions, always call me. Obviously, if you're getting into water fed, if you're looking to put an order in for a system, I would love to do that. But if you have questions, which most people do, like, hey, man, you know, what does this come with? What do I need? What do I blah, blah, blah? I'll cover most of it today. But if not, uh, call me or text me even better, and we'll uh, get all your questions answered. Right. But water fed is simple, simple. Like anything, there are a hundred options out there, and that's where it really gets to be a bit overwhelming for somebody who's new, right? Um, I always kind of put it out this way, is that if you're buying a new car, there are thousands of options and combinations and everything, right? All the different brands and models in each brand, and then you have paint schemes, and you have types and interiors, and but because that all kind of makes sense to you, you don't get really overwhelmed. You go, oh, I like that one. And that's what you end up going with, right? It's the same thing with Waterfed. There's a lot of options and you can spend $20,000 on a package. Hydro station, triple with like a destroyer 90, right? You could do that easy. But there's no need for that if you're not needing that. And most people aren't. So with Waterfed, that's really where it comes into play. Um, I always say the, the, the adage, uh, you don't need a Lamborghini if you're just going to the grocery store, right? There's better things for that. And that's the same thing in water fed. Water fed, just like any cleaning, is a lot of um, 
opinion, if you will. And sometimes opinion is construed as fact and um, people go, well, this has got to be the fact. This so-and-so said this. And it's like, well, that's their fact. And their fact means it's opinion, right? So I'm going to break it all down. And basically, let's start off with how WaterFed works. If you're new, this is how WaterFed works. But there is a system and that system filters the water. There's two types. We'll get into that. But basically, tap water, water normal hose water, comes out of the spigot from the property uh, and goes right through the system. There's already PSI to that, so most systems aren't going to have pumps. When the water comes through, it goes through a sequential filtration or a standard tank and comes out of the system pure, which is under 10 TDS, which pure water, no matter what you see on a beer commercial or what body of blue, beautiful, pristine water is, water strives to be dirty. Water wants to hold stuff in it, right? And those stuff is what's considered TDS, total dissolved solids. But that is just minerals. So normal water out of the tap has minerals. And that's why when you hose off a black car in the sun and you just leave it, it gets water spots, right? If you go to the car wash, the last step in a car wash always is a spot-free rinse before it goes through the blowers, right? The spot-free rinse is pure water. So what we're doing is just like a car wash, right? And that's why there's no squeegeeing, no detailing, any of that. We actually leave the windows wet and it dries pure. It dries clean, no spots, right? So that's the concept of what pure water is doing. Now, I want to tell you, to go into kind of another level, when you use a soap, an insoap, a, a soap is a, a, an encapsulator. It takes dirt, and you've seen every Dawn commercial ever, and it surrounds the dirt, and then that allows the dirt to be rinsed off so it can't bond back to your surface. That's the encapsulation part of soap. And people go, well, why don't you need soap? If it's, we're using just water. That ain't going to work. i got to use soap. Wrong. Wrong. You do not ever need to use soap unless you're degreasing a window, meaning you're in a truck lot or windows on the interstate or something, and you got to hit it with a degreaser first because it's gnarly. Anything else is done organics all with water fed water fed does what a scrubber and squeegee does absolutely perfectly and if not i might say a little bit better because you do the frames and you rinse it there's no residue or anything left on it now if you got to scrape paint or something along those lines people go oh i could do way better nose to glass because you pull out your razor you know obviously that's that's not what this does right you can't take hard water off of glass or scratches out of glass with it that's not what it does right but when that pure water comes out it becomes the encapsulator to a degree remember water strives to be dirty so it takes those minerals puts it into the water and then that's why you can rinse it off and you rinse with the pure water right so basically the whole thing you need is a system a pole and the brush and that is as simplified as what pure water is it's just those things and a hose to connect the tube right so basically you take go up to a window you have your system set up and you're running water through it it's coming out here going up the pole and out of the brush now you scrub the frame always scrub the frame if you avoid the frames you're water feeding wrong and you're going to get spots at some point Scrub the frame, rinse the frame. Scrub the glass, rinse the glass. That's how you water feed. And it is literally that simple, really. It's pretty shocking, actually. Same thing with solar. Same thing with um, um, if you're doing any type of signage cleaning or anything like that. It's the same process. Basically, you scrub it and then rinse it. Now, if you look at most brushes, they all have jets coming through. Now, the water that's coming through the jets, when you take the brush off the glass, the water is spraying on and you're not touching the bristles to the glass. The bristles are what hold the dirt. Now, if you use like a rinse bar, which that's just another piece, it comes on top and you can leave it on the glass. But when you rinse, you take the brush off, it sprays water, you rinse it off. Most windows, if they're not hydrophobic sheet, makes it really, really nice, simple, done. You go on to the next window. And if you ever wondered you know how this magic water works it's just like rain rain most rain is to some degree pure also 
So there's no magic to it. It's not anything. You're just doing it in the right order. You're scrubbing it, which removes the dirt bond from the glass. It encapsulates the water and you rinse it off, right? If you ever see somebody say water fit doesn't work, they're going against science. That's not a thing. I mean, that's it just isn't a thing. Now, water fed works on 99% of the windows. The only windows that sometimes you have a little bit of an issue is like uh, some wooden frames. I've only had one job like that my entire time. I've used water fed 15 years. That'll pull a little bit of minerals up. But what happens is people before you go, well, they, they, they said they don't want that water stick because the last people did it wrong or, or uh, they did it and it turned out crappy. Yeah. Have you ever seen somebody who didn't use a squeegee right, how it looked? If I walked up to people in the street and I handed them a squeegee, said, clean that window, it would turn out awful, right? They'd go, oh man, I'm terrible at this. If I hand them a water fed, especially to a window cleaner who thinks they know everything there is to know about window cleaning, they've been window cleaning for 30 years. I hand them a water fed, they clean the window and go, this thing doesn't work because they don't understand what's happening. They think it doesn't work. But just like everything, you have to have it done right. So you have to practice a little bit. Super simple, but anybody who says it doesn't work is run into one of those situations. Either they threw it up there, thought, hey, this magic stick doesn't work. I'm never gonna practice with it. We have that. Literally once a month, somebody's like, yeah, I, I hate this system, man. It doesn't work. It does work, you just have to practice. No, it doesn't. I did it. No, no, you didn't. Like, don't argue, you have to practice. How anybody ever thought that something they're going to get good at, they don't have to practice. Everything you have to practice. No one's ever instantly good at things. You want to be a better driver? You practice. No kid who's getting in the car for the first time is a great driver. Right? No chef who has ever tried to cook something for the very first time cooked it perfectly. You have to understand things and you have to try it. I, it, it drives me nuts when people go, this doesn't work. It's science. It does work. People are like, oh, you're just, this thing was leaving spots. No, what was the water coming out of there? It was zero TDS. Okay, so there's zero TDS, which means 0% chance that it's the water. The dirt's coming from somewhere. I did it right. You didn't because there's dirt on the glass or there's spots. You're pulling dirt from somewhere else, right? So with all that being said, water fit absolutely works. Don't fall into those people. Uh, we sell dozens of systems every single day. And everybody except for the occasional person who doesn't want to try it um, is absolutely blown away. There's not a person out there who's done water fed for an extended period of time, they've gotten really good at it, who says this is not an awesome tool. It's not an end all. It's not uh, you know, gonna change window cleaning and take your jobs and everything else. There's still always gonna be a need for scrubbers and squeegees, but it's a great tool. Okay. I'm off my high horse there. The big thing you need to know in your area is, is your water hard or soft? Remember I said before that there's two different types of uh, filtration, if you will. We will call those systems, even though one's a tank and one's technically a system, right? If you're in a soft water area, so Georgia, Tennessee, North Carolina, South Carolina, little region, which means your water is 99 and under, you can get away with what's called a DI tank. The simplest form looks like a scuba tank. It just has resin in there, which is kind of like a sand. Looks like a sand at least. But there's chemicals in there and it purifies the water. Most of the country, or anybody who's on wells or anything above, say, 99 TDS, has to go with an RODI, which is the standard abbreviation for a reverse osmosis and back to DI, which is deionized resin. There's also a pre-filter in an RODI. If you always, any RODI system that's out there has to have something to take the chlorine out of the water before the RO membrane. And that's because chlorine uh, affects an RO membrane. Uh, so any system when it's called an RODI actually has three pieces, a carbon filter, which is usually carbon sediment. It has the RO, which is a reverse osmosis membrane, which is a self-cleaning membrane actually takes about 90% of the crud out of the water before it even gets to anything else. That's why your resin lasts so long. And then the last step is your finisher, which is that resin we talked about. That's that sand looking stuff. 
Now, out of all three of those, no matter how hard the water is, it comes out under 10 and is absolutely pure. Systems like that in a standard flow system are the most affordable RODI options. I mean, you can get into that for $1,700. You got the whole system, right? But that also goes up to high, how, how much flow you want. The next step up is a high flow. So you have half a gallon a minute in production. And yes, that sounds like not a lot, but there's always wastewater. And that takes your PSI. So half a gallon a minute is absolutely standard. That is on most of the regular single user systems. The next one's like a high flow system, which would be about a gallon or more um, a minute, which is like the uh, zero max, uh, max plus, 4060, a bunch of those type of systems. And then you get into what's considered an ultra high flow, like the zero triple um, or um, any of those ultra high flow systems, the zero or um, IPC uh, 2X, stuff like that. And then the next step for water flow would be into a pumped system. Again, now you're talking two plus gallons a minute. And then you have pumped high flow systems, which would be like a uh, 2X electric by IPC. That thing makes four gallons a minute, absolutely unnecessarily much, unless you're running four poles and even that's a lot. And then you get into gas powered systems and blah, blah, blah. So as you see, it's like, you don't need a ton of flow. Half gallon a minute on a single user, it goes up 30, even 40 feet on tap pressure. Awesome. The only time you have to get a high flow system, in my opinion, is if you're a water hog like I am, or you need to go up higher or farther with your hose. A high flow system is going to have less restrictions, so you get more PSI. You get more flow, you can put more hose, you can go higher with poles over 30 feet. And then in the ultra systems, it's only if you're running multiple people. Now, the high flow system will run multiple people, again, at those heights. It just depends on what you want, right? Hard versus soft is the only thing you need to know in, 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 in water fed as far as what system to get, type. And I'm telling you, every single person who gets into water fed, I can tell them what they need by just asking those questions. I ask basically, three questions. I say, uh, where, what area are you in? Right. I could pull zip codes, find out hard water. Most of the country's hard water. And when you say your state, you go, Hey, I'm in Utah. You're ultra hard, right? We'll just use a regular, say you're in California or Wisconsin. We'll say hard water, not ultra hard, just hard. And I say, how high do you need to go? And you say, well, I need to go first and second floors of houses. That's what I do. And then they go, do you ever want to have two people running on a system at once or just one? Uh, just one. Perfect. I can get you in. Again, this isn't a sales pitch. I always forget to kind of put it in, but the Alex Revolution or Alex Pure Kit, that is the system, the hose, and a micro pole at 30 feet. Perfect. When it gets into poles, it's height and budget. Poles are where the race car part is, right? The system is not like, well, I'm a beginner. I want to go with just a DI. That's literally not a thing. That No, that's wrong. You, you can't do that. That's not, you don't, a beginner isn't going to use a DI if they're in an ultra hard water area. That's, you don't do that, right? But poles, you say, hey, I'm a beginner. I want a, a, a more best bang for your buck pole on the cheaper side, and maybe I'll get something else. Well, then you go with a basic grade. Now, always do carbon fiber. There's ridiculous to get anything less than carbon fiber. Carbon fiber is so cheap now. I mean, you can get a 30 foot pole complete for like 650 bucks. Like, Why get anything else? Okay. In carbon fiber, there's grades. So the higher up you go, the higher up the stiffness goes in carbon fiber. Now, back in the day, it was weight. So when I first got into water fed, carbon was just kind of getting out. It was carbon composites and graphites and weird other things, right? That was all weight. It was the who's got the lightest pull, who's got the lightest pull, who's got the lightest pull. And at a certain point you go, okay, well, all poles, the, the worst grade carbon fiber pole is like four and a half pounds, five pounds. The lightest version of that same pole is like four pounds. Like if you're talking about a pound, no one's worried. Right, So they're so close, it's not about weight anymore. What it is about is stiffness. Here's what I mean. 
A, when a pole is up and it's super floppy, you've used something like that, you use all your muscles to try to keep it straight and try to scrub without it bouncing up. So your fatigue is out through the roof on a crappy pole, right? Through the roof. But, but if I could have a pole made of diamond or something, I wouldn't be fighting it anyway because it's so stiff, right? What would happen is that I could just push on the pole and five pounds of pressure in my hand would translate to five pounds up there. But we don't have diamond poles. It might be a little bit expensive. But we do have really, really stiff carbon fiber. So when you see different poles, that's why. Say the Destroyer class, one of the stiffest poles on the planet. Uh, it's also the most expensive pole that we sell. But that pole can go up to 90 feet if you need. But starts at 30, right? A basic grade carbon fiber pole does 30 and even maybe 40. Technically, you can go to 50, but I wouldn't recommend it. It's too floppy at 50. So that's why I ask how tall you need to go. That's where your grades of pole come in. And grades of pole will always come back to where your budget is. Because if you said, hey, man, I won the lottery yesterday. What should I do? Cool. Get the Mac system with a, a Destroyer 30. You do that, and that's a great combination. It's a perfect combination, I think. Right? But not everybody can spend more money on a pole. And again, to give you kind of ballpark numbers, throw it out there, you're talking $15.99 for a 30-foot destroyer and $6.49 for the basic version. So a lot more money. You have to decide if it's in the budget. But again, other brands, we sell everything. But the um, Zero brand, by the way, has a 12-year warranty. So even if you buy the more expensive pole, it's going to last you 12 years, right? So definitely, definitely worth it either way on that. But now every pole is how you get the water up there. That's how you scrub. But when it gets up there, the translation, it has to scrub with a brush. And there's lots of different brushes. Again, overwhelming, I know. A standard hybrid brush in the middle category is absolutely the best kind of run-of-the-mill brush. It's got boar's hair in the center as a fiber, and the outside is nylon. Perfect. They last a while, they scrub all right, they do all that. The next step above that, if you want something to scrub even better, is going to be a full boar's hair brush. And by the way, full boar's hair over regular hybrid, everybody goes, ah, I heard it's, it weighs a lot. It doesn't. It, it, the, the weight is not the, the, the difference anymore. That's from back in the day. Back in the day, boar's hair brushes were on wooden blocks. So when you got a boar's hair water-fed brush, it did weigh a lot more because everything else was in plastic. Now you're into wood, it just weighs a lot more. But boar's hair costs more and it wears out a bit faster. You'll get about six months out of that where a hybrid you're talking, getting about a year, about that, right? So you need to decide what it is. Most poles come with that hybrid brush, good brush, gets you going, does all that. It's perfect, right? So getting that all put together, that's all of the pieces you need except for the hose. And I'm gonna tell you that at the end, I'm gonna talk filter changes first, but even if you've done window cleaning and I'm gonna tell you something about hoses that you may not know. But filter changes are super easy, super fast. And I'll give you a quick breakdown and we'll use, again, we're talking zero, so I'll talk about that one. But uh, a zero pure, this is standard for pretty much all of them. That pre-filter is 13 bucks. That is going to be changed every two months or as needed. That's what's dictating flow, actually. A super cheap filter, change it. The resin in that is all going to be based on what your water is, what your efficiencies are, the temperature, lots of weird things. But figure you're about every two months in your resin also. The resin change is 35 bucks. The RO membranes, remember they're self-cleaning. Those are going to last you two to three years with proper maintenance. Two to three years. So you don't have to worry about those for a while. So if you really look at it, you're paying about 50 bucks every two months to run this thing eight hours a day. Super, super efficient, right? If you get into DI systems, that's 100% dictates just on your TDS. Again, if you're soft, it doesn't make, you know, it's not as bad. Uh, but it's always going to be more expensive for those because you're changing all of the resin. There's nothing helping the resin. 
And as a side note, if you buy a DI system and you go, man, my water's too hard, I need to add the RODI, you don't. You need to get rid of that DI tank and buy an RODI system because they're all set together. If there's any type of check valves or, or restrictors, they're all plumbed and calibrated basically together, right? You don't ever want to take your DI and try to add an RO because that it just absolutely would not make sense. Don't be cheap. Just get the system. If you show up and you have like a, you know, R2-D2 piece of crap looking thing, like why even have it at that point? You, you look ridiculous, right? Just get a system all together. I know I'm partial. Obviously, I've done this long enough. I've actually been a water fed for 15 years, and I never built my own system. It just doesn't make sense. The systems are so cheap. They're well put together. They look sexy. They look like they're supposed to be. I've seen some systems out there, and I know some of you guys build your own stuff. It's cool, totally cool. But A, I also know guys built their own system, follow the membrane the first month, the first couple weeks. It's 350 bucks for that membrane. But with all that being said, just make it look good. Some of you guys put stuff together on a, a crusty old cart and there's hoses hanging off and zip ties and duct tape. And man, if you showed up to my house and I was paying you hundreds and hundreds of dollars for a luxury service and you showed up with that, I would literally never hire you back. So just make it look good. Image is everything. Why do you show up in a logo and lettered truck and then you have this, this like janky system that you put together? It looks terrible, right? So anyway, there's your hard truth for the day. Filters, super easy, super easy to change. Most of them are just drop in. Uh, resin again is like sand. So you're dumping out the old, putting in the new. Make sure there are no gaps in your resin. Don't fill it up halfway or partway or go, well, I want the water to go. That's not how resin works. Resin is round. So no matter what you do with it, there's always space for the water. But you want it in there tight enough that there are no gaps. If there are gaps, you'll get something called channeling, which means the water runs through but doesn't touch the resin and then it doesn't purify it properly so there's a, a little bit of um yeah words of wisdom if you will so here's the part on hoses hoses seem like that would be the simplest part right there's a skinny hose on the pole called tubing usually but it's pole hose and it is a 5 16 od but only a 3 16 id inner diameter the inside is 3 16 it's the size of an extension cord Super, super small. And if you know anything about hydrodynamics or hydrofluid dynamics or whatever, the smaller something is, the water is forced through a smaller opening, creates PSI. But you cannot get flow through smaller things. It's like, um, you know, when you were younger, you had, you put 10 straws together and tried to drink a soda. What happened? You couldn't drink the soda. The more straws you had, the straws would collapse, right? Because you're creating so much pressure to try to make that happen. A lot of people go out there and they try to use hundreds of feet of this skinny tubing because it's easy, it's light. But the problem is, is that it kills the flow. And it uses so much PSI to get it through that you just, you have a, a, a trickle, like an old man going to the bathroom at the end. The way to fix that, the proper way, the perfect case scenario, is to have your system connect up to a 3 ace hose. Now, 3 ace is like, um, like an air compressor hose. That's about 3 ace, that size, but it's got garden hose fittings, right? That 3 ace hose then connects to the pole hose. So you have 3 ace hose connecting to your 3 16 hose ID. So what's happening is you're getting the flow for the most of it. You're getting as much out there as possible. And then right when it gets to the pole, it changes the small stuff to build up that pressure. You can, in some cases, make such a difference by just changing that, that you could double your flow. Now, again, you're still max at that five, half a gallon. But people who run, I know guys that are doing two, 300 feet of the skinny stuff. And they're like, this sucks. I don't know. Yeah, you're using the wrong hose. No, I like it. Okay, we still the wrong hose. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. Well, I'm gonna put a pump on it. It's like, it's like having a a, a, a Volkswagen Jetta and being like, I can't be in NASCAR. It's because you have the wrong car. I'll put a bigger engine in it. It's like, okay, I have fun with that. I I don't I don't know what to tell you. By the way, people love to argue. When we talk about this anyway i digress 
right? So that is the hose technique. If you don't and you're only using skinny, if you're gonna take one thing away from me out of this and you know water fed, change that hose to a three eighths. Promise you it'll be amazing. Another trick for getting that extra flow with hoses is the hose, garden hose from the spigot to the system. Go as big as possible. Three quarter inch rubber, beautiful. Don't use a collapsible hose because you're creating restriction before it even happens. And don't go with a skinny hose. You can't go with a skinny hose in the beginning. There's not enough flow and you're just killing it at the end. Let as much in as you can. Three quarter inch rubber hose and a three eighths inch feed hose to the pole and you will get the absolute most out of your system that you can. So there's water fit. In a nutshell, super easy. I know it's overwhelming and that's what we're here for. So if I can help you in any way, or even better, you're ready to pull the trigger, my number is 862-312-2026. That's a cell phone. So text me. It costs you nothing extra for me to put an order in for you, but you get my uh, uh, expertise if you want to call it that. But now I'm in your back pocket. You have a rep. I want to be your account rep. I want to be your resource. I want to help you with the process. I want to get you what you need, and it helps me out. That's how I make my cheddar. So please let me put orders in. Even if it's not water fed, every order, I would absolutely love it. In your checkout screen, if you're logged in, just click save this cart and text me it's saved. I can see that then, right? It's absolutely amazing, and literally everybody who lets me put their orders in that listens, genuinely from the bottom of my heart thank you it is the reason i exist in this world your uh letting me put your orders in is how i get paid and that's how i exist so thank you for that um also american window cleaner magazine you just sat through a 30 minute podcast about window cleaning you are a window cleaning nerd you are going to be better than your competition and you are going to be smarter than your competition and one of the ways you can do that is getting into the magazine tons of articles all business stuff pictures cool things too because we create a culture in the industry so you get the stickers you got window cleaning posters cool pictures articles you got business spotlights you have so many different things in the magazine it's absolutely amazing really go get the subscription awcmag.com it also does me the hugest favor and i see when you sign up so go and do that and uh until next week If you're not in Waterfed, it's the best tool you could possibly be into. I promise you it is amazing. Um, But more importantly, go out there and be epic.